Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ayu lahabbati fillah Continuing on in our study of Al-Sulu Thalatha by Imam Al-Mujaddid Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala The Imam explained to us about knowledge and he said, "Alam rahimakallah innu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm." And he said, "The first thing was knowledge." And then he described what knowledge was. He said, "It is knowing Allah, knowing His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the religion of Islam with the support of evidence." The second thing is application of this knowledge. The third is calling to the people, calling the people to it, and the fourth is per persevering patiently on this path of da'wah, da'wah Allah azza wa jal, and. Then he made istilal of Surah Al-Asr. He used Surah Al-Asr as evidence for supporting and illustrating those four principles. Those four principles are Mustanbata min hadhi ayat hadhi al-ayat al-karima and he mentioned as Allah Azza wa Jal قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم by by the time verily man is a lost except those who believe and do righteous deeds and recommend to one another to the truth and recommend one another to patience and we already described that then he mentioned the statement of Imam Shafi'i وقال Shafi'i رحمه الله تعالى لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقه إلا هذه سورة لا كفتهم. That Imam Shafi'i رحمة الله عليه said, if nothing else was revealed other than this chapter, it would have sufficed the people. Imam Bukhari رحمه الله تعالى said, وقال Bukhari رحمه الله تعالى باب العلم قبل القول والعمل. And then he mentioned the verse because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'lam rahimakallah, I'lam annuhu la ilaha illallah wa sallafi li dhimbik. Imam Bukhari rahimakallah, he said, he mentioned a chapter in Sahih al-Bukhari entitled, the chapter, Knowledge Comes Before Action. So that shows us an important qa'id or a principle of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, of Ahlul Islam, and of the Imams of, of of the Muslims, that knowledge precedes actions and statements. Al Ilm, Qabla al Qawli, wal Amal. Knowledge precedes statements and actions. So before we learn how to make salat, we have to. I mean, before we try to make salat, we have to learn how to make salat. We have to have Ilm, Al Ilm, Qabla al Qawli, wal Amal. And all the other actions in Islam, it requires that you have knowledge. Likewise, those people who get into very big masail and how to speak about others, they try to involve themselves in the issues of uh, speaking about people who commit bid'ah and, and, and make takfir of people without knowledge, without even being able to recite fatiha properly. This is incorrect. This is an absolute khata. Uh, a very big khata, a very big mistake that people fall into is speaking without knowledge and trying to avoid the usul that Imam Muhammad ibn al Wahhab has already made clear for us. And this is an usul of Islam, and this is what the Rabbaniyun do is that, as Ibn Abbas says, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, regarding. The Rabbaniyun, those people who, uh, those ulama and people who teach, he mentioned that an explanation about who the Rabbaniyun are, they are those people who busy the people with teaching them those issues, uh, those important issues before the other issues, and meaning the small issues. Before the large issues, how can you learn about the issues of takfir, the duabit of takfir, and all, and the muana takfir and things like this, and you don't know how to pray properly, and you don't know how to recite the Quran properly, or how can you learn about detailed issues of jarwa ta'adil, and you never studied the sciences of hadith, and 
you don't, uh, you're, you're new to Islam. One year into the deen, and I don't care, one year into the deen, I don't know what you, how much knowledge you could have acquired to where you could be speaking about those kind of issues. So it shows us the importance that knowledge precedes statements and actions. And that also knowledge is in stages and steps. And that we shouldn't try to proceed and begin speaking about the major issues without dealing with those issues that are uh, minor in the sense that they are the usuliyat, that those issues are the awliyat, those issues that are uh, that we need to know in the beginning and that we need to establish the foundation of our Islam upon. So it's very important, al-ilm. So Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, al-ilm qabla al-quli wa al-amal. He said the, the chapter, he titled one of the chapters in Sahih al-Bukhari, showing us and showing the fiqh of Bukhari and the importance that knowledge precedes uh, statements and actions. And then as Dalil, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَعْلَمْ إِنَّهُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَسَاقِفِ اللَّهِ So know, O Muhammad, that لَا إِلَى إِلَى اللَّهُ That none has the right to be worshipped except Allah and ask for forgiveness for your sin. So Allah mentioned knowledge before speech and performance of deeds. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions and established for us and that's why it's a qaida taken from the Quran, taken from the sunnah and the understanding the fiqh and the fahim of the salaf of this ummah that this is a qaida established by our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala that you shouldn't speak about uh, speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge that you shouldn't speak about the deen without knowledge and that these are major, major sins to speak uh, without knowledge and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our many, many sins Amin ya Rabbil Alameen Then the Imam said I'lam rahimakallah and uh, he said no also that every Muslim should learn three matters and apply them al-ula he said first and Allah khalaqna wa razaqna wa lam yutrakna wa lam yutrakna yutrakna hamlan bel arsala ilayna rusulin fa man ata'ahu dakhla jinn wa man asahu dakhla nar wa dalil qawluhu ta'ala very, uh, <clears throat> so the Imam mentioned, he said, first, he said, know also that every Muslim should learn three matters and apply them. First, Allah has created us and sustained us. He did not leave us unattended. Rather, he sent us messengers. Whosoever obeys Allah by following his messengers, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, will be admitted into paradise. And whosoever disobeys him will be thrown into the hellfire. So whoever obeys the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and follows his sunnah with ikhlas, went to the paradise. And whoever disobeys the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, doing the muharramat, those things he prohibited, and those things he warned us against, and bid'ah and shirk and kufr, then they will be in the hellfire, wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika. And this is an obligation for us to follow Allah wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, wa'atiyu Allah wa'atiyu Rasul. Follow Allah and follow the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. That, that's an obligation upon us. That's what Islam requires for us. Kitab wa sunnah. Kitab wa sunnah. Sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and following with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Meaning, first and foremost, the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anu majma'een. The second thing Imam, uh, the Imam mentioned he said, second, Allah is not pleased when partners are associated with him in shirk, neither angels who are near to him, nor messengers who are sent to mankind. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means, uh, and the mosques are for Allah. So invoke not anyone along with Allah. That negates shirk for us. That establishes that the masajid, their places of worship, their places of, uh, of dhikr, Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the deen of Allah azza wa jal. And that they're built to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and not to supplicate, not to worship, associate partners with Allah, anyone or anything. The third, 
Whosoever obeys the Messenger وسلم, and singles out Allah in worship must not show loyalty nor have any uh, love towards those who oppose Allah and His Messenger وسلم, even if they were their closest of relatives and the evidence is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لا تجدوا قوم يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من هذا الله ورسوله ولو كان أباهم ولا و ولو كان أباهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرة أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم من كتب في قلوبهم الإيمان وعيادهم بروح منه ويدخلهم جنة جنات تجري من تحت الأنهار خالدين فيها رضي الله تعالى عنهم ورضوا عن Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, about and establishing this qaida of al-wala wal bara loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hating for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. <coughs> he says, You will not find a people who believe in Allah in the last day making friendship uh, or loving with those who oppose Allah and His Messenger. Even if they were their fathers or their sons or their brothers or their kindred, for such he has written iman in their hearts and strengthened them with the ruh, the proofs, the lights, and the true guidance from himself. And he will admit them to gardens, meaning Jannah, under which rivers flow to dwell therein forever. Allah is pleased with them and they with him. They are the party of God. They are the party of Allah. That's his belah. Verily, it is the party of Allah that will be successful. And this is referring to the party of Allah, the Hezbollah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, not the Hezbi shaitan that we see in Lebanon, those people who, who uh, curse the Sahaba as a part of their religion, those people who oppose Ahlul Sunnah, kill Ahlul Sunnah, hate Ahlul Sunnah, wa'iyadhu billah minhum. That's not who Hezbollah is. They take, as we mentioned, the Sqa'id, al-ibra bi haqa'id, laysa bi musamiyat, the proof of something is in its substance, not in its name. So although they take the Hezbollah as their name, in fact, they're Hizb shaitan They are the party of shaitan because they oppose Ahl Sunnah. And the Asl of Ahl Sunnah is the Sahaba. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.